Welcome back. In our last video, we did some defensive programming to handle edge cases in our Rust code. And given that parsing statsd messages is working well enough, let's review our plan to see what's next. We've completed one through three. So next up is to work on a sharding function. For our needs, sharding means consistently redirecting a statsd metric to another statsd server for processing. We'll make use of a hashing function to map a metric to a server in a consistent fashion. So for instance, we already normalized these two metrics. They, you know, user logins with a country US tag and a host tag of 1234. This other message has the tags in a different order, but these are the same metric or measurement. Uh, since the, you know, measurement part and then the tag tuple part are the same in air quotes. So they both need to go to the same backend server when they get through our sharding logic. Now this one, if there's more than one backend server, this one may go to a different backend server because the host is different. But these two must be sharded to the same backend. That's what I mean by consistently. So while it's running, if it receives this one, it'll shard it to server one, perhaps. Next time it receives the same metric or this one, it should also go to server one. All right. So I found this hashing function created by Dan Bernstein, and it looks simple enough. So let's give it a try. This is the URL where you can find it along with two other hashing functions. So let's walk through it and we'll keep in mind how it might need to be different in Rust. So first, let's talk about types. Uh, this unsigned long means that the hash function returns a 64-bit unsigned integer. This unsigned char asterisk <laughs> string is a pointer to a string, which in C, it's really just a pointer to the start of a memory location where there's a sequence of bytes, and we're going to treat them as a string. Char is is one byte long in C. All right. Have another long here, which again is 64 bit unsigned integer. We've got a signed integer called C. All right, we're actually, let's see. So line nine here. This is just a loop over all the bytes within string. And strings in C are null terminated. So we start off pointing to the start of a, a memory address. We dereference it in C, which means give me the value that this pointer is pointing to, and we'll put it in C. And then it's gonna post a decrement, which means that string is going to be moved to the next memory address. And since we're dealing with chars, it's really just going to move to the memory address that's one byte to the right, the next byte in a series. OK, so we have the char value in int C. And then we're going to do some bitwise shifting. So we're going to shift this five bits to the left. And we're going to add it to itself. And then we're going to add the value of that character, that byte that we were at. Now this loop is going to continue until C is falsy. And in C, like since strings are null terminated, once we get to the end of the string, this is going to point to a memory location that has zero in it. The byte will be zero. And that way C will be zero and the while loop will evaluate to false and it will exit and will actually return the hash value that we had computed. Okay. So we'll focus on these because I've never done bitwise ops in Rust. I've never done much of anything in Rust. So we're just going to work through it. And We'll see what we got. I think 
It's worth noting that when you shift, that the bits are at the the bits that are at the left side of the byte are going to shift off to the left and basically go into the ether. And if you add, if you keep shifting to the left and then also adding hash, it's I think eventually our, this is going to overflow. So we're going to have an overflowing add and C C doesn't care. Um, but as we'll see, Rust does, so we have to do something special. All right, so I've distilled shifting left and an overflowing add into just some simple C code. We've got one, so I've created some unsigned chars, so there's are one byte variables. And I'm starting with a value of one, shifting it to the left. And we're going to see what the output is, should be two. Then we're going to put 128 into the A variable, which should look like this binary representation. So one should be leftmost here. And once we shift it, it'll shift off and zeros will be added to the right. That's how shifting works. So this should end up being zero. Now, just for fun, we can also shift one off nine spaces, which should result in zero. It's just as a test. And here's our overflowing add. So if we have unsigned one byte int 255, and we add one, it should add one, and they should carry off, changing all these to zero, and then there should be like a one carry at the end, which won't go anywhere, resulting in a zero. So that's an overflow. So it'll wrap around. And so that should be zero. All right, let's make sure that it is. Type. All right. One shift to the right to the left is two. 128 shifted to the left is zero. One shifted to the left nine is zero. Good. And Overflowing add of 255 plus 1 is 0. I'm using uint, or basically unsigned char, just to make it easy to reason about. That way we're, our brain can more easily understand what happens in one byte's worth of bits. And let's do the same in Rust. Give me just a minute. All right, let me um make a car make a new uh, package and I've already done most of the work here, so we'll just copy in what I've got to save time. And I'm doing mutable unsigned 8-bit types, just to keep it simple. Um, a, we're going to be reusing A, so let's ignore these complaints about it being mutable when we don't seem to need it. but. All right, so one shifted to the left one is two. So that does work in Rust. That's great. So let's try 128 shifted to the left. OK, that works fine. Now let's try one shifted nine to the left. <laughs> Rust tries to help us. It knows that that a is only eight bits wide and we're trying to shift nine so it's gonna gonna protect us from ourselves there we don't need that in the logic because we actually don't shift by more than the the type width 
Um, in uh, we only shift five. That's our max that we shift. So that's not really a problem. Okay. Now let's do the overflowing add. All right. So it panics. If you do it naively, it panics on an attempt to add with an overflow. So if we do change to this, which took me a while to figure out what this does, because wrapping, to me, I interpreted wrapping literally, like it, <laughs> the bits overflowed off the end and it wrapped them back around to the right side. And I like, and my brain was like, no, that's not what I want. But what it means is the actual <clears throat> integer value wraps around to zero or, you know, as if it started at zero like an odometer, like when your car goes over the number of places that your odometer mileage can hold, it wraps around to zero as if you have never driven at all. So that's what wrapping means in this context. And you have to use this um, to make a rest. Stop panicking. Okay, 255 plus one is zero. Now, there's also a couple other ones that trip me up. There's there's other ways to do this wrapping too. There's a different type that you can use, but uh, numeric types automatically have this. There's also an overflowing add, which is pretty interesting. That gives you um, a, a, a Boolean so that you can check and know when wrapping did occur, which is interesting. In case you want to know that it wrapped around to zero, you can check that Boolean. There's also saturating add, which is a new, something that's new to me, which if you try to add one to 255, let's actually try that. I've not tried it yet. It will clamp it to the upper bound. Since you're doing add, it'll clamp it to the upper bound of that eight bit unsigned integer. There's similarly saturating subtraction sub which if you're subtracting it goes down below zero, it would clamp it to zero. So it clamps at the upper and lower bounds for that type that's being operated on, which is pretty, pretty neat. Didn't know that was a thing. Um, I read that there's some like digital signal processing and like audio video applications where you kind of want to do that. You want to clamp it as if it really reached its max and not have it overflow back around to zero. Okay. So that's enough for now. We're at like 12 minutes. Uh, we figured out how to do bitwise operations and overflowing ads in Rust. Uh, those things are required for our hashing function. In the next video, we'll put it all together and, and you know, actually create a function in Rust and have it return an integer. We'll loop over the strings that we pass to it. And uh, Great fun will be had. I'm sure we'll learn some other things and hit some other hurdles. So I'll see you next time.